In fluid mechanics, the angular momentum balance equation is very intimidating, but also very useful. So let's take a look at what it's made of and what we can calculate with it. The equation is made of three terms. On the left is the net moment. This is what we try to calculate. The net moment is the sum of all the twisting efforts that are applying on the fluid as it's traveling through our control volume. This is represented with a vector. It's a vector with an arrow here. Um, and so the convention is that the length is the amount of twisting in Newton meters. And the direction is pointing so that if you look in this direction, you will see the moment twisting clockwise. So in this direction towards me, from me, from, from you to me, would be twisting like so. And from me to you would be twisting like so, for example. This vector, the sum of all the moments applying to the fluid, can be made of two things. The first term is the change in time of the angular momentum inside the control volume. And this would be, for example, if you have a bottle, a bottle of water, and you spin the water inside, so that now you have a spinning body of water inside, and this spinning body slows down. So the amount of angular momentum reduces because of friction from the walls of this, of this bottle. Um, then this would result in a net moment, the net moment exerted by the walls on the fluid. Uh, is a change in time of the angular momentum of the fluid inside the bottle. This is where there is no inlet, no outlet, but you could very well have a control volume where flow is coming in and coming out and going out. And every time it's coming in and going out, it is carrying with it some angular momentum. And this angular momentum is measured with this term. It's a surface integral, the integral over the surface of the control volume, over the area here, of every time the angular momentum so the angular momentum is the radius, the position with respect to the origin here, r, the vector r, with a cross product to the velocity. And attached to this velocity is density times velocity times area, and this is the mass flow. So take a look at a case where we have one inlet and one outlet. Moment and angular momentum are always measured with respect to one reference point. This point here is represented there. You can choose arbitrarily what you want this point to be. Uh, let's say the flow comes in here and leaves out there. And we want to look at this V orthogonal part. So this V rel dot n, the dot product of the relative velocity and the n vector. This would be here in this case, you take the orthogonal component of velocity, velocity that's orthogonal to the inlet. And you take this and you multiply this by as a dot product with the n vector that's pointing outwards by convention. And so we get a number, a length. Uh, that's the length of the orthogonal with a sign that's very annoyingly in fluid mechanics is positive for incoming flow and is negative for outgoing flow. The positions are measured from this point um, and they are measured with a vector, a vector r position, like a radius vector, if you would like. Um, if you have inlet and outlets with uniform flow with velocity vectors that do not change in space like in this example here all the velocity vectors are the same at inlet and at, through the inlet and through the outlet um, then this equation simplifies a little bit and maybe it, it's a little bit easier to grasp you still have here the unsteady term the change in time of the angular momentum inside the, the control volume and then you have the sum of for the outlet the cross product of position and, and momentum, so that will be the angular momentum, and minus, for the incoming flow, the cross product of the position of the inlet with the, ang so the, with the linear momentum going through the inlet, like so. So again, this is a vector. Uh, cross product of two vectors is a vector, like so. What good is this equation for? Well, it's useful for anything that has spinning in it, anything that has some twisting effort some spinning and some balancing calculations. So things like a garden sprinkler, for example, um, to calculate how much twisting effort, how much moment the fluid is generating on the sprinkler, you would definitely calculate the angular momentum of the fluid as it comes in, as it leaves uh, the sprinkler. And this allows you to calculate all kinds of movements that have some twisting effort applied to it, some uh, rotation and moment applied to it. So this is again a, a garden sprinkler. Uh, I showed this picture before of a nozzle, uh, a jet, a nozzle behind the jet engine that would pivot, and so you would exert a net force. Well, net forces are nice, 
but there are cases where you also want to calculate net moments. Now this belongs to a jet fighter, uh, which is, I find pretty cool. I'm not so much into military airplanes, but this airplane is quite nice because it can land vertically. This is the F-35 and it's got a jet engine a head inside, which is horizontal. And then they have these, this nozzle at the back, which twists and, and turns swivels downwards. And then you have, whoop, and then you have this fan here at the center, which sucks in here and pushes it down like so. Um, if you look at the diagram, it looks like this. This is the jet engine here, and it's pushing the hot gases downwards at the back. But at the, at the front of the airplane, you have this fan pushing air downwards. And then on the sides, you have those two nozzles, which serve for uh, balancing the aircraft around another axis. Um, so from below, the airplane looks like this. You have the hot nozzle at the tail of the airplane, and at the front of the airplane, you have this um, front fan with, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, with outgoing air also. Um, all of this is managed by a computer, the onboard computer, so the pilot doesn't have to regulate this. The onboard computer in this airplane has to solve for two equations. One equation is the net force exerted by the fluid on the airplane, um, and this is because it wants the net force upwards to be equal to the force downwards, um, the lift force to be equal to the weight force. Otherwise, the airplane starts to accelerate downwards or upwards, and the flight is no longer maintained. That's one thing it wants to solve for. But at the same time, it needs to solve for a momentum equation. Because the risk is that if the fan pushes too much and the jet not enough, even though the sum of those two forces may be equal to the weight of the airplane, um, if those two forces are not balanced around the center of gravity, then the aircraft will pitch up or down um, and will fall, fall over. Um, and so you need to solve for, you need to calculate uh, the moment exerted by the flow of air uh, through the machine to be able to make sure the aircraft remains balanced at all times. So this is what it would be good for. Now let's try to work it out with a, an equation and, and numbers into this equation to see what this equation can actually do for us. Uh, we're going to take a look at a rocket. And this is, um, this is a rocket uh, taking off from um, a US base. It's a Falcon Heavy rocket by uh, the company SpaceX. And what's really cool about those rockets is that they are partly reusable. So the three thrusters that you see at the bottom, let's take a closer look here, three thrusters uh, at the bottom, these three thrusters are reusable. So after the rocket has launched, uh, they stop and they turn back and they come back to land uh, with the upper part just keeping um, flight uh, above the atmosphere. Um, and it's quite nice because you get really spectacular videos of those thrusters coming back down to land. This is not a rocket taking off, it's a rocket coming down uh, to land on the platform. And once it has landed, um, the th um, thruster looks like this. This is a remote control platform. This is all super cool. Uh, but what's even nicer is that uh, it sometimes fails. And when it fails, you get rewarded with all kinds of explosions. And so this is really nice. Uh, there's a really nice video uh, you can watch on YouTube for one of the thrusters has, once it has landed, uh, one of the legs fails to deploy and the thrusters falls over and boom, it all explodes. And you can even see the shot wave propagating across the water surface. It's really super nice. I can't show it for copyright reasons in this video, uh, but you can check it out yourself. I put the link in the lecture notes. Anyway, what we want to calculate here is a case where the rocket has landed um, and then one of the legs fails to deploy properly, fails to lock. And so you have the rocket, which is standing on this leg here and it's starting to fall over. Oh no, what's gonna happen? You have this little thruster here, which is a little rocket engine taking in fuel from the inside and throwing this fuel out with velocity V2 here, and it's trying to maintain the rocket in position. And we want to calculate the amount of moment that this um, thruster is exerting around the center of the rocket. So we want to calculate the net moment applying to the fluid, knowing that the net, the net moment by the fluid on the rocket would be exactly the opposite. So let's take a look. Uh, what we do, as usual, in um, this part of fluid mechanics is we draw a control volume. We draw a control volume and we just pay attention that the outlet um, of uh, the control volume is nice and perpendicular to the velocity vectors. And this simplifies our calculations a great deal. And then we position the point X, which is the point X where we, about which we want to calculate the moment. And then what's really cool is that nothing else matters anymore. You, there's no rocket anymore. There's no barge. There is just the control volume and the outgoing flow. And the question is, what is the net moment 
exerted on the flow um, as it flows through this control volume. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at the map and let me try to switch slides so that you are able to see both together. Yes, I think this would work. So we have the equation um, for balance of angular momentum. And again, this is the net moment um, exerted on the fluid. This is what we want to calculate. And it's equal to the change in time of angular momentum inside the rocket. To us, today in this case, it's zero because it doesn't change appreciably during the time we're doing the calculation. And we have here the net flow of angular momentum through the boundaries of our control volume. This term here, we're going to split in two terms, uh, being the inlet and the outlet. And so it looks like this. This is for the inlet here, and this is for the outlet. There's no inlet in our case, just an outlet, but I keep the inlet in the math until the very last minute. So you can see how it all plays together because there are many hoops uh, to jump through the inlet, outlet, positive, negative, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is what the equation looked like. Uh, and again, I rewrite this a little bit so as to take this v rel dot n, so this, this part here as v orthogonal. And this is a dangerous term, again, very annoying. Um, this is the term that is positive outwards and negative inwards. So this term is gonna be here a negative number and this is gonna be a positive number. Very upsetting, uh, but this is the convention in fluid mechanics. So again, the same equation, I just reproduced it from the last slide. Uh, here we are. Uh, when we want to replace this now with the actual number, uh, we're gonna have to pay attention. So um, when I put absolute values on this, to have this term here, I have to put a minus at the inlet and a plus at the outlet, like so. Um, again, same equation. And now I drop the integrals. Why do I drop the integrals? Because the flow at the inlet, which is nothing, uh, and the flow at the outlet are uniform across the inlet and the outlet. Um, so that when I integrate here with respect to area, anything that's inside the integral doesn't depend on where I am along this, this whole area, and so can get out of the integral. And so I'm left with just the integral of dA, which is A. So I get, sorry, um, the cross product of R times angular momentum here with just here um, the area. And it's a minus for the inlet and it's a plus for the outlet. I just rework now the terms and reorganize them nicely. We have here rho v orthogonal a and then the cross product of the vectors for the inlet and rho v orthogonal a for the outlet with the cross product of vectors for the outlet. Um, and so of course rho v orthogonal a is the mass flow m dot so I put m dot here. This is these both of those numbers are assumed to be positive numbers in this case um, minus for the inlet and positive for the outlet. Okay so here we are. Now is the difficult part, which is the part with the cross products. So the same equation as on the last slide, incoming cross product, outgoing cross product. How do we work with those out? Well, the thing is, uh, we could take the cross product of those two vectors, but we're going to cheat. I mean, instead of taking Vn here, we're going to take the uh, component of Vn that is perpendicular to the radius. So I'm going to rewrite this equation here by taking instead of Vn, I take the component of Vn that is perpendicular to this radius here. So if I measure the position of where the v, Vn applies with the position R, and Vn is like this, then I, I take, instead of taking Vn, I take the component of Vn that is perpendicular to this radius here. So I squish down Vn uh, to be perpendicular. And this will be here, the cross product of those two vectors and the cross product of those two vectors are the same. This one is just much easier to calculate. This is what I do with this. Okay, um, and the last bit now is gonna come when we remove the vectors. We remove the vectors because R, V, R, and V, all of those vectors, they are in the plane of the picture that you see just below me here. They are all in the same plane. And so all of the vectors uh, due to the moment, due to the multiplication of those vectors, will be out of this plane and they will all be aligned. So I can just drop the vectors and just measure the length of m using this. So it's not like I have twisting moments with different coordinates. They're all inside the same plane. And so it works out like this. We have here um, the length of m net about the point x is minus the, m, the incoming mass flow multiplied by the length of the radius to the inlet and the component of velocity perpendicular to that radius here. Yes, I have to pay very attention here. This is the component of incoming velocity that is perpendicular to that radius vector here. And the same thing for the outlet. Okay. Now, 
which of those terms is going to be positive or negative? What is going to be the convention for this? The convention is you sit in the positive direction, looking in the positive direction. And then you look at those, ve at those vectors here and um, the amount, when the vector is turning clockwise, it's positive, and when the vector is turning anti-clockwise, it's negative. In our case, this v ortho let's take a look at v orthogonal out, because v orthogonal in here is zero. v orthogonal out, in our case, is this v that you have here below in the video, this uh, in the, uh, here in the thumbnail, uh, which is v2, which is going out there. And if I look, I have to turn around because I'm staring at the screen, but you're also staring at the screen, but they're not, they're not the same, so we have to look together. Um, so I'm looking here in the positive z direction. Yes, I'm looking for the direction of z that's positive. And in this direction is v2 at the tip of r. Is it turning clockwise or is it turning anti-clockwise? Well, v, if I look at the screen just below me here, um, I look in the positive direction, v2 is turning clockwise. And if it's turning clockwise, it means it's a positive number. It's in the positive z direction. So that v out perpendicular r here, the component of v2, which is perpendicular to the radius point, the, the distance between the origin x, point x, and the outlet here. This number here is going to be positive. This number here is going to be zero. And so now when I put numbers into this, uh, this whole term here is zero. We carried it out for nothing. Uh, just for, for show, the first term here. And the second term, uh, just below here, this term here, for the outlet, I put the mass flow of the outlet, the radius of the outlet, and then I put plus the length of the component of V out, which is perpendicular to R. Okay, um, and so now with numbers, uh, we put in here the mass flow, 2.5 kilograms per second. Uh, the distance to the thruster, 40 meters, it's a pretty long thruster. It looks pretty small on, on photos. It's a very long machine. Um, and then plus the length of the component of the outlet velocity that's perpendicular to R. The outlet velocity is 155 meters per second. And then I have to take the cosine of the angle uh, to flip it up. I think for you, this would be uh, flip this vector up like so, upwards with a cosine of 20 uh, degrees. So I'll put numbers in here and I have plus 14.7 kilo Newton meters. This is the amount of moment that I have. This is the length, yes, I just calculated. And I can express now the moment vector, m net, as a vector. It's positive in the z direction, which means it's pointing out of the video. If it was negative, it would be pointing towards uh, the viewer, but here it's pointing outwards. It is turning in this direction, it's pointing in there, um, with a length of 14.7 kilonewton meters. Okay, so um, now if you want to calculate the moment that's exerted by the fluid on the rocket, <coughs> is exactly the opposite. This would be now a moment that's pointing towards you and that's turning with this twisting. And you can see that this moment here, uh, turning towards you, exerted on the rocket, compensates for the rocket flipping over. And is it enough to maintain the rocket in flight or not enough? Um, then um, the video will tell you that. So this is uh, how you make sense of this tremendously complicated but also very powerful equation for angular momentum balance in fluid mechanics.